if you are going to start a property business in 2021, please avoid these things that I'm about to share in this video because I want to help you and educate you and I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I've made throughout my journey. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick with this video and please hit that subscribe button if you're interested in learning more about property and learning more about my journey. Investing in property is hard. Buying the property is actually the easy part in property, funny enough. But there are so many things that you should avoid. So here are five things in this video that I'm just going to recommend that you do not do. And as a disclaimer, everything is just from my opinion. I'm not an expert, I'm not a coach or a mentor or anything like that. Everything that I'm just saying is from my experience and my own opinion. So the first thing is do not overthink everything. You are going to want to overthink it, especially if it's your first property, because you're always going to second guess the area, whether it's the right property for you, whether it fits your criteria, but you're always going to second. I understand because I second guessed my first property so many times, but I was quite fortunate that I had a good support system around me, especially with those already investing in property and just a little bit ahead of me and further ahead of me. So accountability is key in this and reaching out to other investors to see what their thoughts are but you've got to be careful of who you listen to just be confident with your numbers if it fits your criteria and you're happy with it you've got to start somewhere so just go and take the plunge you could be waiting forever for your perfect property it's never going to be perfect so you just got to make sure that you are doing everything in your in your power to make sure that it's a good property it's an investable property and that you are going to make profits from it the second point i want to touch on is don't compare yourself to everyone on social media or every other investor because everyone is at different stages of their life some people may be ahead of you some people may be below you some people may not grow as quick as you some people will grow way further than you so you just got to be careful of who you compare yourself to and what i'm trying to say is don't compare yourself to anyone because you just don't know where they are you don't know what their objectives are what they're trying to achieve and why they're doing it everyone in property has their own reason to why they're investing in property or growing their portfolio so yeah just don't compare everything and the other thing that i want to say is that not everybody shares bad things they always share the good things and sometimes that might be perceived as a little bit of an exaggeration to what it actually is and it's down to your interpretation of how you perceive success and for other people's successes as well so just be careful of what people are posting on social media whether it's true false whether they're sharing the bad things as well as the good things or whether they're not sharing as much of the bad things so just be careful the third point is don't just focus on capital appreciation you'd be surprised at how many new investors that i speak to only focus on capital appreciation and only want to invest in london because of capital appreciation yes while we've seen that property prices have increased on average you just don't know what the future situation is and you can't just rely on capital appreciation especially if you're going to be in negative profits you can't pay out of your own pockets um to go and pay for a property that may um, increase in that capital appreciation you just can't take that risk when you don't know and especially if you have to sell and we're in a down market you're not going to make any profit on that property and you're probably going to be in negative the other thing is when you're focusing on cash flow is that that amount adds up over the year. So for example, if you make £5,000 um, before tax on a property in pure profits, over 10 years, that's 50K that you're still making on top. Obviously, you've got to minus the tax, whatever tax bracket you're on, but that's still 50K of profit that you wouldn't have had. The fourth point kind of ties into my second point about not comparing yourselves to other people is don't listen to everyone in property, especially is when you don't know if they're in a good mood or a bad mood or they've had a good experience or a bad experience because two people could be investing in the same area one can give you everything positive about the area and the second person can give you everything negative about the area and how much they hate it and how much they wish they never invested in that area whereas person a would be like yeah definitely i'm going to continue investing in here it really depends on the person so you've got to be careful of who you listen to make sure you're doing the research and taking into consideration both parts but you've got to make a decision on who you listen to. 
The fifth point is the one that I have learned the hard way and it's don't do everything on your own. So when I first started, I was so overwhelmed with everything that was going on and I wanted to do things on my own because I was so scared of JVing with someone because you're essentially in a relationship with them and I was just scared. And I was 23 and I felt a bit naive and I just didn't want to go down that route, especially so early on into my journey. In hindsight, I don't know if it would have helped help accelerate my portfolio. I just don't know. But I tried to do everything on my own to save money and it just didn't work. And then I ended up taking a break because I was so overwhelmed and so burnt out from poverty that I just didn't want to do it anymore. And then when I decided to form the business with my aunts, I was thinking, look, there's three of us in the business. We can definitely do everything on our own. But that was the mistake that we made. We couldn't do everything on our own. We're not experts in those fields. We don't know how to do things. And when you let the experts take over, honestly, it has changed everything. Letting project managers take over the build projects, let builders do their own thing. Um, when you get property sources to help you find properties, like there's so many things that you can leverage. And the other thing is you want to make sure that you're focusing your time on making your business grow, not doing the small tasks. Like why would you waste your time on the little tasks where you can delegate that and pay for something small to be done rather than wasting your time doing those small nitty gritty things to try and save some money when you could be focusing on, okay, how do I get my next property? How do I get my next um, investor on board? How do I grow my business? I'm gonna highly recommend a book called Life Leverage by Rob Moore. If you don't know who Rob Moore is, please go and Google him because he is literally an amazing branding person in property and just a great person that gives advice generally. But this book literally explains to you why you should leverage little things and delegate those little nitty gritty tasks so you can focus on the bigger pictures and get paid more. I know I haven't covered every single do not point in this video, but I just wanted to focus on the five main points that I have learned and truly experienced from myself in my business over the last three years. If that was useful, please hit that like comment and comment below for what you found useful on this video because it will really help other people. If you have any tips on this below of, of your do nots from your experience, please comment them below because it will help everyone who is new to investing or starting out their property business. Thanks so much for watching and please hit that subscribe button and I look forward to catching you guys in the next video. Thank you.